I'm Cathy Trout. I'm the founder of West Yorkshire Dog Rescue. When a dog gets a home, for me, it's like winning the lottery. I left the business world as a very successful project manager and decided to form West Yorkshire Dog Rescue because I love dogs and I wanted to give something back to society. We accommodate dogs in foster homes. We do all the vet work to ensure that the dog is healthy going into a new home, including neutering, vaccinations, treating for fleas and worms, and microchipping. Hello, I'm Mary, and I've just recently adopted my lovely Jack Russell from West Yorkshire Rescue, and I'd recommend anybody who wants a forever friend to do the same. She's a friend, she's somebody to talk to, just somebody to get me out of the house for a walk and she's just there for company most of the time. I just fell in love with her and as soon as I saw her on the, on the computer as well I knew she was mine. The pleasure you get back outweighs anything at all. You're just so much um, company, friendship and somebody to feel that you can look after. This little dog is named Tilly. She's a breed called a Bichon Frise, which is a French breed. She needs a home with somebody around most of the time who will give her a lot of exercise. She likes the company of other dogs. She's very sociable. The reason that we're struggling to find a home for her is because a lot of people won't be patient with the house training. Okay, see you in a minute. Bye. We're going to film the owner who is just coming now to adopt this little cavalier whose name is Max. I sign and Stewie signs the adoption contract. So this is the transfer of ownership in the eyes of the law. So I want to say a thank you to West, York, West Yorkshire Dog Rescue um, for giving me the opportunity to um, take Max um, and give him a forever home and welcome him into our family and make our family complete. And the key point of the adoption contract is that the dog must be returned to the charity for rehoming if the owner can no longer keep it. Dogs in kennels for long periods of time whilst they're waiting to be adopted can get very distressed. There's not other dogs in kennels nearby barking. They don't get enough exercise and socialisation with either people or dogs. So in a foster home, if they have behavioural issues, the foster can come some way towards helping address those behavioural issues. And even if the behavioural issues aren't fully addressed and cured, we can describe to the new owner what those behavioural issues are, what the dog is like to live with, and we can describe a strategy for coping so that the new owner understands what to do and how to get the very best happiness out of the dog in the new home. So, you're thinking, what is it like to run a charity? To be honest, it's like running a business. We have to comply with charity law. We're a registered charity and we're responsible to the Charities Commission. We're also a registered company and have to comply with 
the rules and regulations of Companies House. We have to demonstrate to the public that we have professional processes for managing not only the business but the financial side. It is a big strain on fosters to have dogs in their homes and whilst it's true that we would continue to use fosters, what I would really like to do is to buy a big piece of land, have a house on it where I could live and have some log cabins, each with its own individual exercise area that's huge and fenced and in the log cabins there's furniture, sofas, soft furnishings, a television, the radio, um, everything like in a home and the dogs live in little family groups that are friendly with one another and they've got toys and chews and they can run from the log cabin out into the exercise area and they had so much land that I could arrange for them to be taken for lovely walks all around the fields and that that piece of land and the house was very near to a road so that we could easily have volunteers. It would need to be isolated so that people aren't disturbed by dogs walking. But it's very difficult at the moment, especially where I live, for volunteers to come and help because I'm in an isolated small holding up the top of a mountain with no road so the volunteers have to walk up the mountain to get to me. If I was down on road level, I would get more help. I would like a behaviourist and a trainer and an agility course and some proper facilities for demonstrating what the dog is really like to the public. That would cost a lot of money, I know it would. <laughs>